This vast, majestic landscape might be freezing cold, but it too has been hit by heat waves. Antarctica has seen its lowest ever recorded levels of sea ice this year and last year. If the lost ice formed its own country, it would be the 10th largest in the world. What's behind it? The changing climate. Last March saw surface temperatures of close to 40 degrees Celsius more than usual. So we know that um, with global warming and climate change, um, the frequency of extreme events in, in many fields, whether that's you know in Africa or in Europe, is likely to increase um, as we go forward. And similarly, um, there's also a risk with Antarctica that extreme events will, will increase in number um, as well as size. Those changes could spell the end of these emperor penguins. Unlike other penguins, they breed on sea ice. If fossil fuel emissions continue at their current rates, it's estimated 80% of their colonies will disappear by the end of the century. And as the Foreign Office, which commissioned this new worrying report on the region, noted, what happens in the Antarctic doesn't stay in the Antarctic. For now, the huge expanse of ice helps cool down the rest of the planet, reflecting back the sun's rays. The more that melts, the more heat is absorbed by oceans and land. So there's a danger the region could end up accelerating global warming. That's what's already happening in the Arctic, which is warming four times faster than the rest of the world. I think it's really important to recognise just how complex and interconnected a system Antarctica is and how an extreme in one part of the system, for example, a heat wave in the atmosphere, can impact another part, so surface melt on the ice sheet. And this is really important for understanding just how things could change and how important that is um, for everyone. This dramatic footage captured part of the William Glacier collapsing around 78,000 square metres breaking off. Events like this made more common by the rise in global temperatures. Melting ice sheets are further raising sea levels that are already threatening low-lying countries. There's still a lot scientists need to understand about this remote wilderness, like why until recently sea ice levels were rising. But what's clear is that climate change is affecting every inch of this planet and all of us are going to feel the impact. Well, earlier I spoke to the polar scientist, Professor Martin Seigert of Exeter University, the lead author of that study. I asked him how shocked and surprised he was by the data that he'd found. So this is about Antarctic extreme events. We've known about extreme events from around other parts of the planet, extreme flooding, extreme heating. It's in the news right now, right? But what we haven't been so certain about is collecting all the evidence of extreme events happening in Antarctica. Global warming as a consequence of burning fossil fuels are having an impact in Antarctica, not just with the gradual rising temperatures, but with the increase in frequency and severity of extreme events. And we're documenting some of those things in, in this paper. It is alarming. Um, I have to tell you, I've been working in Antarctic science for 30 years. 30 years ago, we really weren't talking about extreme events in Antarctica at all, but now they seem to be uh, a regular occurrence. And who are the culprits here? Is it the usual suspects? It's you and me. It's, 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 it's every, everyone. The way that we love our lives is contributing far too many greenhouse gases into the, uh, the atmosphere, and that's heating the planet. And if this is happening in the Antarctic, is it more serious than what's been happening in the Arctic? Does it have a bigger yes, impact? It's a lot more serious, absolutely. Antarctica does us a massive favour by... by it, acting to cool the planet down. And if that stops happening, then we'll get accelerated um, uh, uh, global heating. But the other reason it's so important is the massive store of ice that exists in the ice sheet in Antarctica, which if it melted, sea levels globally would go up by 57 meters. Now, I'm not saying that's, that's gonna happen. That's the potential sea level rise that exists. But frankly, a, a meter or so will have drastic consequences for low-lying Pacific nations, uh, and for many coastal cities and ports and infrastructures and things. And that can happen as a consequence of these extreme events that, that we're documenting in Antarctica. What is the most likely increase in those rises that you foresee? We've had about 20 centimetres worth of sea level rise since 1850, since industrialisation and, and burning of fossil fuels. About half of that has happened because the oceans got warmer. 
And so the other half is because the ice has melted. Most of that, of that 10 centimetres that's left is come from glacier melting. That's a small valley glaciers like in the Alps and other places. Hardly anything has come from Greenland or Antarctica. But here's the thing, that's the historical contribution to sea level rise. Looking forward, it will be the ice sheets that, that contribute more because today the ice sheets are contributing more than the glaciers and in combination they're contributing more than thermal expansion. So from now on and into the future, it's the ice sheets that are going to do it. And we stop talking about centimetres then and we start talking about metres. So unless we change our ways drastically, we're talking about a kind of massive biblical flood in the future. We are acting in a very irresponsible way for the future, in terms of the future right now. And we know that. And we know that there's an alternative as well, which is a, is a zero carbon transition as quickly as we possibly can. And that is the future's best idea. That's the only one we've got. And we've really got to get on with it at pace. So I have to tell you, if we'd have started this 20 years ago, we'd have had a sort of graceful glide to net zero, but we didn't do that. We've wasted those 20 years. In fact, we've put more carbon in the, in the atmosphere than we, than we than was in, in the year 2000. And so that's going to make the transition to net zero even more difficult. But here's the thing, if we just keep delaying, it gets more difficult and it gets more expensive. We've really got to get on with it now. And just finally, if you look at the political environment in which this debate is taking place and the mm. scientific urgency attached to all of it, can we still reverse this process? And are we up to it? Well, we can't reverse it because we are going to have further warming. The minimum we'll get away with is another 0.3 or 0.4 degrees centigrade of warming. That's to the 1.5 scenario. And so we would expect more Antarctic extreme events uh, as we're documenting. They're going to get worse. I mean, that's, there's nothing we can do about that. But what we can do is make sure that the planet doesn't heat to two degrees centigrade or two and a half or three degrees centigrade, because that will be a disaster. Professor Martin Seeger, thank you very much.